We're <laughs> <laughs> got it. This is where you take four kids, three animals, two careers, one boat with a whole lot of reality. Welcome to Cruising Resurgence. Hi guys, today we are going to be heading up to our school. Um, next week is pre-planning, so Yay. yeah, <laughs> every week every teacher loves. Okay, so let me kind of explain what pre-planning is. Um, it's not actually pre-planning, it's like, it's like meeting. Yeah, Instead it's like three meetings. It's a meeting about the meeting about the meeting, and then maybe in about 10 meetings, we're going to talk about what we're going to actually do. And you'll get maybe 30 minutes of planning time. <laughs> right. And a lot of times I provide lunch, so that's good. That's awesome. Okay, so pre planning actually is when your child starts school, it is where we have everything planned out for the year. So then we know exactly when going to lunch we know exactly when all of our specials are we know when, ex when um, any special activities that are planned that is, is going to take place and how we're going to make those happen um, we talk about curriculums we talk about changes in curriculums we talk about changes in um, school policies all that kind of stuff and then all the grade groups get together and then they do their kind of planning for what the year is going to look like and so forth and so on. So in order for us to get ready for the pre-planning, we actually have to go to school today. Can't be on the boat every day, but we have to go to school today and we've got um, some stuff to get placed around the classroom. My classrooms are wrecked. <laughs> yeah, mine's done. Um, but we've got to get his classroom together because you know he's the man and he procrastinates. I have to have the touch of a woman. <laughs> I get to do the boards. Yay. So I've got to make sure that his boards are done and I've got to make sure that all of this stuff is put around the classroom and he's moved schools this year. So he's actually at my school this year. So now we're, right, we're really starting from scratch. So that should be just the extra cherry on top of that. Nightmare. Which means we also get to move from one school to another school, boxes and boxes of stuff. Um, so then after we get all that done, then we have to start focusing on what changes have been made due to COVID. So let me take you back. March of last year, we had to start wearing masks <laughs> everywhere we went. Um, we came in for um, spring break. And it was like the last day of spring, like right when we were heading out the door for spring break. And all teachers, everybody, the only thing we had in our minds was testing. Let's get ready for the end of year testing, get all that done, and you know, and have a great spring break, come back, knock out this testing, and we'll be done for the year. No. So the very last day, maybe five or ten minutes before we even left the building, the kids weren't even there. It was just the teachers. We had a planning day. So they came over the announcement and said, unfortunately, you need to grab whatever you need for the next week or more. And they didn't, spring break. Yeah, and they didn't specify how long. Whatever you're going to need out of your classroom, take care, take, get rid of all perishables, anything that you need to take home that you might possibly need to do your job, Hello, that's my classroom. But make sure you take everything out because you won't be coming back. So we had heard rumors of other schools actually shutting down because of COVID, but we didn't realize it was at our doorstep. Yeah, we that weren't fast. shut down at first. They just shut us. They said um, anticipate probably at least two weeks past spring break, but they didn't elaborate. They're just going to look into that. So then the next thing you know, here we are, so, you know, we're starting to have the team meetings um, and they're starting to talk about virtual school. So, and that was quite the event 
because it was literally putting on the brakes, switching in reverse, and changing every single way you've ever thought of teaching. Um, it was really, really, really hard. I don't know about you other teachers out there, but I know everybody that I work with, it was, it was upside down, inside out, and it was basically, it's almost like you changed careers. You were teaching, but it wasn't like anything you'd ever done before. Yeah, that was a big challenge because it put a strain on like the internet because all of a sudden, you know, we've got two of us trying to teach virtually and we've got a child trying to, to learn virtually, you know, all of us using the internet, and plus everyone else uh, at, in the neighborhood using the internet connections and all. So it kind of made the internet connections tight and, and hard to get, I guess, the bandwidth and what you need to Yeah, that was just forward. one small, that was a small problem in, in the midst of everything. So virtual, it had its pluses and it definitely had its negatives to it but we went through all summer hoping that COVID would kind of you know calm down unfortunately we're in Florida we are in the panhandle so we're not down in Miami-Dade and some of those areas that are really having it bad but we are still in an area that was a you know a week or two ago considered a red zone so that's like a high number so here we are, we're getting ready to go back to school. The kids are physically coming back to school. There's three different options in our area where you can do complete virtual school, or you can do, which is where you have teachers that teach your children. However, you don't know them. They're complete strangers to you. Um, you're just assigned teachers. It's almost like the K-12 programs that you see, the commercials on TV. Um, the second option is the remote learning, and that's where teachers at your physical school will be teaching your children, um, and you kind of get to know them, and your kid may possibly, if COVID goes well, has an opportunity of actually going back to face-to-face brick-and-mortar learning, and that's the last option is the brick-and-mortar learning. So we have three different options. Um, Cubby is actually going to be, because we are concerned and worried, Darren does have some health concerns. Um, so we decided that we were going to do um, the remote learning. So if everything calms down, then Cubby can go back. And I'll be teaching the remote learning too to start out because of the health concerns um, Kelly mentioned. So my classroom is actually gonna be like an empty classroom. I'll be in the classroom, but there'll be no students. My students will be on the other side of the computer. So he's still in um, quote unquote virtual land. So um, I will still be seeing kids face to face though every day. Um, once we get everything settled, then we're gonna kinda see how this whole COVID thing in education is gonna play out. Um, across the nation, teachers, um, they're kind of falling on two sides of the spectrum. A lot of teachers, well, I don't know any teacher that isn't ready to go back to school. I mean, this is what we do. We love, this, we love these kids. So, um, not being able to see them every day, not being able to get your hugs, not being able to interact with them the way that we want to is going to be really, really hard for every teacher I know. Um, but to keep them safe and to keep us safe, we're gonna to have to implement some different strategies to make sure that we keep um, the germ level down. So they're actually talking about, yes, Darren, we're gonna to have to wear the mask, um, but we're gonna actually have to put up um, their, their little structures, but they're plastic and um, little dividers basically. So we're gonna try and put those up between the kids and see how that works. Um, I know I've heard of some schools that are already having cases and we have to explore and we'll learn more in pre-planning about if we're going to actually have to close back down and go back to virtual. But, so we're kind of anticipating when we get to school today, I imagine there's gonna be a lot of buzz in the hallway and amongst the teachers talking about what actually is going to take place and how that's going to affect our classrooms. But um, I guess we'll see you guys um, when we get there and we'll let you know more when we find out. Alright.
to go behind there, you might want to use it. disclaimer um, talking about a whole lot of reality got a little bit of news today we definitely have a whole lot of reality now <laughs> yeah we really do okay so um, we had a, a bit of a bombshell dropped on us the um, other day um, we've taken a couple of days to absorb the information and to figure out where we need to go from here because um, yeah it's kind of a shock. it's huge um, Darren got a phone call about 9.30, um, a couple, ago. yeah, about two nights ago, and it was from um, our principal, like I, we had told you guys, we live, work, and play together, and we both work together at the same elementary school, and um, we got a phone call from our principal. Um, we had literally, that day, had just... This is the same, that's the same day that we filmed going up to the school and talking about getting the classroom ready and, yeah. and getting all this design. Yeah, same we, day. Same day, that evening. Um, we'd come home and done some editing. Well, anyhow, we got a phone call from her. And um, unfortunately, due to COVID and the numbers um, we had explained in that video, which you'll end up seeing, we'll make this a part of it. but. Unfortunately, due to the numbers, we have students that had three choices. You could do brick and mortar, or you could do virtual, or you could do remote. So with the amount of kids that were doing virtual and remote, that meant that there was fewer teachers needed in the actual classroom. It got plummeted by a lot. They let... It was like 2,000. Yeah. So that decreased the number of students, and that decreased the, the number of funding which decreased the number of teachers Jobs. and unfortunately that included Darren. Now I'm still there um, but unfortunately Darren lost his position and we're pretty much devastated. Yeah. Um, one we'll income, we'll back, two incomes as a teacher is is the equivalent to barely you know making <laughs> it above here. <laughs> Um, we, unfortunately, we spend, in the water from the sailing world, the ocean world, we're right here. Yeah. So now, right now, we're it's kind of creeping up. We're trying to trying to think of a way to to replace that. And yeah. Get so back now here. we're down to one income, um, and it's not a great one. It's not even a good one. Positive news: you guys are gonna get to see a whole lot more of me. Yeah, you'll get to see <laughs> a lot more of Darren now. You get to see a lot more working on the boat, um, and. Um, and now we have to sit down. We kind of had a family meeting um, last night and we're, we're looking at whether this is going to be a tragedy or an opportunity. We're going to make it an opportunity. So we've decided we're going to make it an opportunity and um, we're kind of, we'll talk to you more about what that opportunity is going to be um, when we get a little more hold mentally of what needs to happen next. Yeah, we know God will um, provide. We'll, we'll... It'll be all right. God's going to provide and we'll, we'll get something figured out. Right. So, um, we also, we had a um, news channel come and pay us a visit. Um, they reached out to us. Um, they had realized that we, you know, teachers talk. 
So yeah. we were all talking about the current, you know, status quo. So um, News Channel 5 actually came out and really, really nice guy came out, did an interview with us. So you're going to be able to see portions of that. And, um, but that's how quickly everything went from roses and... Well, yeah, because they let me know in the teacher's note, I guess, two days ago, and it didn't start becoming more wide knowledge until yesterday. Right. You know, a day later. I think that so. the, the sting had to, and the shock Just had to wear effect. off a little bit. Yeah. So, um, but I think we're still coming out of that. Yeah. Um, but we'll make sure that you guys get a link to be able to see the full interview and we'll have portions of it on here as well. So um, I want to thank you guys for supporting us very much very um, because right now this show and having you guys involved in our lives is really keeping us grounded. It's keeping us, um, you know, the, we, we're, say, if nothing else, the, the filming, it really, it takes your mind off of the, the reality, the reality. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go back to that reality. I promised thing. you the reality, so reality? here it is. But filming and giving information and kind of hopefully you guys will have some fun enjoying watching it and all. It takes your mind off of the bad things that are going on. So. But we do. We really want to thank you guys for supporting us and um, keeping us afloat. The sailing community is it's an awesome one, and um, we're really glad to be a part of it. Heck yeah. Okay, so hi guys. Um, <laughs> you're going to notice that we're all dressed up today because during pre planning, we weren't really dressed up. But today is orientation, orientation. so all the kids are coming by and they're checking out their classrooms and um, getting their bus tags and stuff like that. So, all the fun beginning of the school year kind of stuff. But, um, so, but you'll notice that Darren <laughs> is here after. I'm here the news that you just got and um we were really blessed completely blessed because we have like the best principal in the world and um after we found out he did not have a position um our principal really got on the ball and she turned over every leaf she could turn over and she fought really hard and she was able to get everyone that was let go from her school um, she was able to get them a position. So, Darren is actually back yeah. with us at this school. Same so, school. Same school, same classroom, a just a little bit different position. So, what are you going to be doing? And all, that, and all that happened in a really short time, if you think about it. We it was went, just a matter we, of days. We went, and I guess I can take this off now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is part of our precautionary stuff. I'm going to be wearing this every day. It's going to take a little bit. But, yeah, it happened really fast. We went from, um, went from being all stressed and wondering what we're going to do to... You know, a few days later, being back in back okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to be in the same same school, same classroom even, and you know, due to the fact that I've got some underlying health conditions, that's why I'm making sure I wear this <laughs> and all. They have me teaching a remote classroom, um, so I'll, I'll be in the classroom. It's all you know. We kind of halted the decoration, and then we started the decoration, mm -hmm. and we halt the decoration. Um, it's kind of funny. The decorations are back on. Yeah, they're back on. <laughs> but it's funny if you go in my classroom. And you haven't even seen it this morning. In my, my classroom, I've got an area where I'll be doing the remote instruction from. I'll have a board, I'll have a computer, I'll have everything set up. So what the students are going to see looks like the perfect, glorious classroom that my classroom will be. But what it in reality is, it's, it's kind of a storage building as well. you got my classroom in the front, and I've got everybody's tables and stuff that they don't need or they don't have space for right now, since I won't have any students in the classroom, since mine will be actually remote, then... Um, yeah, my classroom is so it's like part storage, part classroom, and and today. So you essentially have a mullet for a classroom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Par it's all business party, in the front, yeah. and all party, party in the back. In the back. Yeah. yeah, that's great. But anyway, I, I'm just happy to be here. Glad that, um, and my principal, I can't, I can't thank her enough, Miss Fleming. You rock. You are awesome. You probably you the, have been the greatest a saving grace <laughs> to so many people and a blessing. Um, let's see. Uh. Let's talk about one more thing and then we're going to go because we've got to go back to get to orientation. We're going to get back. Um, yeah, Miss Fleming may. She may want us to be busy. Probably. <laughs> okay. Um, just taking a minute. Um, weather. So we looked at the forecast because uh. we want to get back out on the boat and we want to do some film, you know, filming for that. Yeah. Um, like for a solid week is 
storms like every every single few minutes I, I just day. got a uh, what did I get just a few minutes ago literally lightning 10 miles away storm nearby yeah <laughs> been that so way for every day it's been that way and it's going to continue to be that way and that's just one of the things of living in Florida we have our little monsoon season we have our little hurricane season and the rest of it's just nice hot and steamy yeah. But um, unfortunately, we're in our you get rain every day for a week. But that's season. okay, because let me tell you, after after the, the up and down and the up and down and, and the stress of the week and then being relieved and all, I'm going on the boat this weekend. Yeah, if if it rains, I'm, I'll am i be on the boat. I may have a rain jacket on, but I'll be on the boat. Yeah, so we're going to learn how to sail in um, squalls. Yay. Yay! I'm so excited. We'll stay in the base. We'll be safe. We'll be all right. Yeah. Okay, so if you don't ever see us again, make <laughs> sure that you send someone out looking for us and somebody can pick up Cubby. <laughs> yeah, and my, and my students that never got a chance to meet me, be sure and tell them that I... <laughs> yeah, you might want to call some of these people and let them know. Call She's probably at the bottom of the bay. <laughs> yeah, we'll be fine. <laughs> all right, well, um, I guess that's all we have for right now. But um, stay tuned. Next week, we're going to desperately try and take you on a tour around Resurgence and show you the inside. Um, there's a lot of things about her that desperately needs a lot of TLC. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start making a to-do list and figuring out point by point by point what needs to happen next since the bottom job was done. And so, so hopefully we'll get some cooler weather. I've got to get under there and do some wiring. Because right now, we, we don't want the boat, now that we've got the bottom job done, we don't want the boat to, to burn and sink. Um, That's probably a good idea. <laughs> the, the wiring is probably going to be in desperate need. Yeah. So. All right. Well, guys, we will see you next week. So make sure you join in right. and check us out. And we'll show you the nooks and crannies and probably some spiders on hey. resurgence. But in the meantime, <laughs> don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, if you want some extras, join us on Patreon. Pick a membership level. We'll give you a lot of extras. There's already some videos on there. And um, actually, there's going to be an interesting video from our little saga that we just had. All right. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys. Bye.